Welcome to the Career Refresh Podcast. I'm your host, Jill Griffin. Join me each week as we discuss the strategies to reset your career with actionable steps towards a finer future. I've spent my career working my way up and through the ranks of global organizations and startups. Today, I show others how to do the same. I'm on a mission to help professionals everywhere learn how to refresh and manage their minds so they can thrive in their careers. Ready? Let's do it. Hey, you. Welcome. I love that you're here exploring how to refresh your thoughts to create a more successful career and life. Today, I have some thoughts and insights I want to share for you around perfectionism and perfectionists. We know them. We love them. We may even be them. Many people take pride in being called perfect or a perfectionist. I mean, who doesn't want to be thought of as perfect or to think of themselves as being perfect? We often want the perfectionist on our project because we know that they're going to add a keen level of an eye or a quality to the work that's being produced. And that sounds great, right? But I'm here to pop the perfectionist bubble. Perfectionism definitely shows up in different ways for different people. And at the core, I'm talking about how you think you need to be perfect in order to be accepted valued, or to succeed. And it could show up in your thinking in just sort of a general, like, I'm not good enough, so I have to try harder. Or it could also be this idea that you think after you've delivered, you're sort of beating yourself up that you could have done a better job. And you've set unrealistic expectations of yourself. And for others, when you attach performance and failure to your self-worth. There's a cycle of unrealistic expectations that are really harmful. First, the constant criticism is harmful because it becomes your default mindset. And second, it's harmful because then you're always approaching challenges from a place of failure avoidance. Perfectionists often drop into a cycle of unrealistic expectations that become pretty harmful. First, there's a constant criticism that's harmful because it becomes then your default mindset. And second, there's a thought pattern that's harmful because you're always coming at challenges from a place of failure avoidance. And if you're coming with the mindset of failure avoidance, that creates anxiety or tension, stress, nervousness, general avoidance. And that's the energy then that you're using to create. So you can see where that would be a problem too. So many of your professional and personal challenges stem from perfectionism. If you are a perfectionist, do any of these sound like you? You live in the extremes. In your opinion, there is a scorecard and you are constantly grading yourself if you are either winning or failing. And this can show up because you're either not achieving your goals, because if it's not perfect, you're not going to complete the goal of the task. You don't want to submit it. But it could also show up in things in the extremes that if things don't go your way, you're negatively affected by the outcome. Another way is you only feel good when you get validation from others. And this one's a real woof because if you believe that your validation comes from others, you will, and that you will only feel good about yourself and your performance if you get external validation, then you're always on um, waiting for the fix. You're oh, it's like an addict. You're always waiting for someone else to tell you that you're okay or you're good enough. And if it doesn't come from within, again, you're always on that treadmill of waiting for validation from outside yourself. Another way is that you're afraid of looking bad or being called incompetent. And then when that comes up in you, you feel fear or apprehension. And then again, that's how you are approaching your work. You could take feedback personally and assume that others are talking about you. You don't realize that you're not the reference point. Your self-worth rises and falls because you believe that self-worth is conditional and is achievement-based. Your identity is attached to achievement and others commenting and validating your achievement. You're always waiting for the compliment, and when it doesn't happen, your mood is affected. Again, this is like the addict needing the fix. Here's another good one. You got rules, my friend, and there is a 
big fat manual. You may even have a laminated manual and it's spiral bound in your mind and it's the book of rules of how people should be, behave, and act. That's for yourself and others. But the problem is there's only one person who knows that there's a manual and that's you in your head. So you're holding yourself and others to a really high standard that they don't even know that they need to hit because the rules aren't made clear to them. And then again, you're grading and scoring yourself and others based on this manual. And even if you're not saying anything, trust me, they can feel it. They can feel that they're being judged. It's it's there. You can feel it energetically. And then because there's no satisfaction, you're always looking for the way to improve. You never pause to see the success you've created. You don't feel proud of yourself. You don't celebrate because again, you're looking for what have could been better. You're focusing on lack and it's sort of like a scarcity thinking. The challenge here is that if you're never fulfilled, you are always seeking the dopamine hit of more. And dopamine is about anticipation. You are waiting for, but when you get it, it's not then about dopamine and there's that letdown. So you need the next hit and the next hit and the next hit, which is why waiting for validation or compliments or approval from outside of yourself is setting yourself up for failure. You want the next thing because you think the next thing is gonna make you feel good or that maybe it's actually the next one after that. You keep chasing what's never going to make you feel good enough because you think perfection is needed to feel good about yourself. So listen, perfectionism is not the same as doing your best or having high expectations of yourself and others. I don't want to confuse perfectionism with ambition. Striving for goals is great, right? It's how we grow. But a lot of perfectionists, again, don't achieve because they're never done. And to loosely quote Brene Brown, you think that if you acted and looked perfectly, you could minimize or avoid the pain of blame, judgment, and shame. You don't want to get hurt, be vulnerable, or experience failure. But experiencing failure and mistakes is necessary for your growth. These feelings don't hurt you. They just feel uncomfortable, but they don't actually hurt you. I'm not telling you to lower your expectations. When you begin to create awareness of what perfectionism is doing to you, your health, your relationships, your career, you can start to have some compassion for yourself. You defaulted to perfectionism as a survival technique, but it's time to begin to peel back the layers of your thinking so you can shift from this destructive behavior. Where does this all come from and how do you manage it? I believe the root cause of perfectionism is that you have a deep belief that your value is conditional. You need to be perfect in order to feel good. You also think that you need to be busy to feel good. You think that if you look, feel, or act busy, you're now worthwhile or you're adding value or you're contributing to the bottom line of the company. Your value is never conditional. It is never based on your productivity. And as a human, you are inherently valuable. There are so many things that you do that can't be measured or quantified. The way you show up with a positive attitude, the way you really listen to your clients to make sure that they really feel heard, the way you help your teammates out when they're stuck on a strategy challenge. If you suffer from perfectionism, I want you to look for all things that are good, good is a really good place to start. So this is a pen and paper exercise. Make a list, brainstorm. List all the things that are good about you. As a Gallup trained strength coach, I help people dig into their strengths to understand where their talents show up. I help them understand how to connect thought work to their strengths so they can amplify and leverage them to make the most impact in their career. And if you don't have clarity on your strengths, there are free tools online, or you can work with a career coach. You can also ask trusted friends and family or lift comments from a recent review. There is good in there. Find it, make the list. Change your perfectionist beliefs by asking yourself if what you're doing is perfect or is it good? Good is a great place to start. 
You know the expression, don't let perfect get in the way of good. It's true. Even Apple doesn't wait for perfection. They ship on good. That's why my phone is now on 14.5.1. They ship on good and update on the next round when they get more information and they pivot. One of my teachers says that the most unproductive and ineffective behaviors stem from fear or resistance. With perfectionism, you have fear around self-worth. You want others to give you positive feedback so you can feel your value. This is operating on a fear-based mindset. Perfectionists want to control and have a lot of resistance about what's happening around you. Once you accept what is, there lies the opportunity. You're not giving up. And when I think, when I say things like I know best from a place of command or control, I'm probably going to miss a lot of details. There are other ways to get what you want. Acceptance allows your brain to pause a beat and allows space for the pivot. It allows you to be innovative, to gather new thoughts, opinions, and to not react from the emotion of resistance. You are accepting where you are, and only then will you find new thoughts and new ways of being. Learning how to create your thoughts and therefore your reality is the secret to a successful career. Trust me. This is what I got for you today. Before I go, who are you getting your support from? I'd be honored to help you with your career challenges. You can learn more on my website, jillgriffincoaching.com. All right, my friends, have a great day and I'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for listening to the Career Refresh Podcast. If you're enjoying this podcast and you want more career and mindset tips, get on my email list by going to jillgriffincoaching.com. I'll also put that link in the show notes. But before you go, please rate and review this podcast as it helps me get the word out to people everywhere so they can thrive in the workplace. I'll see you next time.